Hi, it's Jeff. And Denise from MouseSteps.com. And this is show number five of Mouse Steps Weekly. Sponsored by Theme Park Connection in Winter Garden, Florida. And we had an incredibly busy week this week. Very busy. But uh, we'll start off with Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Just uh, came back last Monday, I think, from a big... Four or five month yeah. uh, rehab. Looks good, too. Looks very, very good. Uh, they, they've they changed the queue around. There's more twists and turns. There's some possible Inter- future interactive things. I'm not quite sure what all these uh, props and things are, but uh, we shall see about that. In the future. Right. And it uh, looks like all the geysers and all the uh, effects are working. It looks fantastic out there. Uh, you know, I, I don't remember the geysers going like that ever. Yeah, everything looks great. This I'm not quite sure if they, they touched this part up, but it does look nice and bright. And these uh, were not working on the first couple of days, the waterfalls, but they were working when we, when we went. finally got there, which was on Tuesday. And the track felt smoother. Very, very smooth. Smoothest that I can remember it. But not too smooth where you wouldn't have as fun a ride. Right. So now we're going into the earthquake scene, and um, it, they, they certainly fixed the, the big tarp problem that they used to have on the left, but um, no real things falling. I remember that no boulder earthquake. that boulder on a stick right there used to come down from the sky, so I'd love to see if that uh, ever gets fixed, fixed. <laughs> or, or redone, <laughs> maybe with projections or What did the tarp something. do? Keep the... Keep, keep the, the rock from falling, probably. <laughs> But, uh, but even at the exit, they had these old faithful type geysers going off in full force. And these have worked before, but not in a long time. Yeah, I haven't seen them going for about 10 years. You know, they, they do have the one over at the Wilderness Lodge, right. and this is very much like that. So um, very nice to see them going off again. And I hope they continue. I hope all the effects continue to work because it looks absolutely terrific. And our next stop was Snow White's Scary Adventures. This was the very last evening. As you'll see, it's turning into evening here. And uh, even the Evil Queen came out with an apple to share with Snow White for her final final day. Yeah, very appropriate. <laughs> and what, uh, what is be, to become of this area? Princess Fairytale Hall. So all the princesses will be meeting and greeting here. And um, this is happening because they're going to have a new Seven Dwarfs Mine Train uh, dark ride roller coaster type deal to be in the new Fantasyland. But it would have been nice to have two Snow White attractions. I would have been okay with that. I would have been okay with that too. Dark ride things are hard to come by. But uh, we'll tell the story here is uh, is uh, young Ben. He uh, was the... The, the final uni- rider. Yes, the unanimous choice as the final rider. And he is uh, a young man who is autistic. He has ridden Snow White's Scary Adventure 3,500 times. And I think this was handled really, really well with a lot of, uh, a, lot of a lot of respect, a lot of class. There's uh, all the fans standing around waiting for the, the very last car to pull through the doors here. Ben's family had actually moved to Orlando uh, so he could be closer to Walt Disney World and Snow White's Scary Adventures. And everybody's clapping. I think, uh, again, it, it's nice to see such uh, such respect for the final night. Some of the final nights aren't handled as nice as this. So it was very good. And there he goes. And uh, I don't know if he'll choose a new ride, but... Uh, he can always move to California. He could move to California. He'd have a sh- he would his have share plenty, of dark plenty, rides yes, there. Yes, Mr. Toad, Snow White, he would be in his glory. But anyway, it was a fitting goodbye and, uh, you know, farewell, Snow White. We're looking forward to whatever comes next. And to going to Disneyland so we can ride it again. <laughs> And actually, earlier that morning, we had checked into Disney's Art of Animation Resort, so we could be there for the uh, the grand big grand opening. opening. Yes, just for one night. Right, and uh, it was we it was wonderful. We had a great time. This was the big uh, opening ceremony with Meg Crofton and all the Disney characters. They came out and they sang some uh, Art of Animation song. <laughs> I had never heard it before. <laughs> I think it perhaps was made up for the event, don't you? <laughs> And there's Meg Crofton. She had uh, a, a Nemo necklace on, which was all glittery. I have it on my website on Mouse Steps. Yeah, that was a very cool uh, picture you got there. That was neat. And there's all the characters and confetti, and uh, it is now opened to the public. And we had a good time staying there. Yeah, we had a great time. And again, if you come back next week, we're going to have plenty of uh, more coverage of the resort itself. Today is more of the event. 
This was a tour they were giving of the lobby. They were welcoming all the guests and the media types for the very first day right here. A lot of uh, excitement in the, in the lobby. And this is the lobby and then uh, the store and the landscape uh, restaurant. Right. Landscape of Flavors. That's correct. And again, next week we'll get into all this. We'll tell our, you know, give a, a full full tour of our own. But right. this is just to cover the uh, pomp and circumstance, so to speak, of the opening. She was giving a tour of the uh, ink and paint shop. And he was telling about the big blue pool, which has uh, audio. If you go underwater, they'll talk to you every seven minutes. <laughs> and it's the largest uh, pool area on Disney property now. And it's very nice. There's Nemo and Marlin and what looks like French fries. And this was a uh, the very first pool party. The manager of the resort gave a little speech, and Mickey came out, and this little kid kept running to see him during the speech, and it was really he cool. Finally and he finally got to actually hug him. finally got to hug him at the end. And uh, we got to have our picture with uh, the, I, I guess we can call him uh, Beach Going or pool, Poolside Mickey. Poolside, poolside Mickey. Mickey. Another event they had during that time the was the stamp, uh, ceremony. the stamp ceremony. And I will get our notes here. We can see the uh, flick and dot from A Bug's Life. Uh, Bob Parr, Mr. Incredible, and Dashiell Dash Parr from The Incredibles with Dash. Nemo and Squirt from Finding Nemo. Uh, Woody Bullseye and Jesse from Toy Story 2. Well, I think we're getting ahead of ourselves oh, here. Oh, well, that's next. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Boo, Mike Wazowski, and uh, Sully from Munsters, Inc. So those are all the new stamps available now at the U.S. Post Office. And you don't always get to see all these characters, especially together. Yeah, it was really cool. I love seeing all the different characters out there. And uh, and here's Radiator Springs in the car section, which will be opening in just a couple weeks. And we'll have tons of uh, photo ops with different cars, and kids are going to love that. And we had a chance to interview these guys. Jay Ward, who is from Pixar, and Chip Foose, who many know as a custom car builder and designer. And uh, they really talked us into this new area. I mean, it looks really cool. Be sure to, to check the show notes. We, we have the full interview uh, linked in the notes. Next week, we'll be going in-depth about Disney's Art of Animation Resort, including the food court, uh, the room tour that we've done, and uh, much more of the pool area. And if you have any questions regarding Disney's Art of Animation Resort, leave them in the comment section of YouTube. Now it's time for our vintage segment, which is not all that vintage. We're going to go back to 2010. <laughs> when but we, it looks uh, vintage. Yes, it looks very vintage. And this is the original, well, this is what the Art of Animation Resort looked like a couple years ago. When it was supposed to be the Pop Century Legendary Years. And I'm actually glad it never became that. I mean, who really wants to stay in, you know, 1910? So Maybe somebody that's, what I thought, I did that's a big fan of 1910. <laughs> I mean, not 1900. too many people remember 1910. I don't think it would have been as much fun as Art of Animation. Right, is. right. And you know, there's always little rumors that we keep hearing that they're going to switch over Pop Century to more Art of Animation type. Well, resorts. I've only heard the so rumor once, so I I've don't heard know. it more than once. Oh, so. this is where the uh, Little Mermaid buildings uh, are. are now. What but a difference! They're not open yet. Uh, that will be the only uh, non-suite buildings in Disney's Art of Animation. Right, right. So, Just um, standard rooms. Yes, what a difference, though. What a difference. And uh, right there is the the future Lion King section and the future area where the Nemo section is now. That's the main hall. It's amazing how different it is now, and I, I just think it's a great addition to Disney's resorts. So we both agree we're glad that they uh, didn't go through with the original plan. And here is Wet and Wild. Uh, Mouse Steps was invited to uh, cover the new Blastaway Beach opening. Blastaway Beach is over one acre. It's the biggest water play area of its kind in Florida. And uh, pretty nice. I believe it's 16 slides and all kinds of water jets, I, like 160 different water jets and water uh, interactive elements. I have not been to Wet n Wild in close to 20 years, so I, and I know you hadn't been there quite for quite some, some time. time. But it uh, looks like they just opened it. All the kids are All running All the kids in. are running. Uh, these kids had won contests, and I believe 50 of them. Stilt walkers. Stilt walkers. There's always stilt walkers. It would walkers. not be an opening without stilt, stilt walkers. walkers. Oh, and there's the, the playground, Blastaway Beach. And I was actually very impressed. Again, I have not been to Wet n Wild in many years. 
and uh, really liked it. I think we're going to have to head over there. Yeah, you brought me back the brochure, and I was going through it, and it looks like there's uh, a lot of fun, fun things, fun, things fun attractions. Do. And you to love do. the water parks especially. Right. Right. So, I mean, you can tell me some more about all this stuff. Is This is still the new area? Mm-hmm. And there's only one, like if you are a family and the kids uh, want to play on this, there's only one entrance and one exit. It's the same oh, that's area. And that way uh, parents can keep an eye on their kids a little bit better. Now, we've done a few of these water park uh, openings lately. And uh, this, this does look definitely bigger and more involved than some of these other things with a bucket you know this is not mm-hmm. an off the rack bucket sp- spilling type of uh no addition. they had something different that wasn't a bucket yeah, but i see not a bucket and and i was told that the slides are a little bit wider so that parents can slide with the kids cool okay. and this is a surf pool and that looked like a lot of fun so again we're gonna have to head back there and speaking of a lot of fun we also checked out this brave highland games tournament area at epcot and this was actually much more fun than i expected yeah i mean it was stiflingly it was really hot, hot. 95 plus They're probably 95 degrees out but uh and here's you get to spin a wheel and then you get a button Right, and there's four buttons total. Right, and you're either a MacGuffin, a Macintosh, you know, you get to your Look, oh, looks like you, Yeah, you were a Dunbrock, and I was a Dingwall in this particular uh, game. And here you are shooting the bow and arrow. I don't like to see myself see, so much on video. Last time you had me being the bow and arrow guy, so now I uh, didn't do so good. I think I hit the ground. But it doesn't matter what you do; you can shoot them, and they will say what a great job you did. And I missed. <laughs> I missed four holes, and they said, "Excellent job, sir." And, and here I'm like pounding haggis. I believe that's what I'm doing is pounding haggis. Sounds like food. Yes, I don't think it's really it's supposed to be very good food. And I don't here think is I'd you like doing it. the uh, bean toss. bag. Oh, is that what it is? I think cake? it's called cake toss. Hmm. I know it doesn't look like cake. No. But I kept hitting the triplet. <laughs> <laughs> and this, I I do not even know what this is. I, apparently, you you just the whole purpose is you throw this log. It's called a mini caber toss. I believe that's how it co- is called. I would hate to see the full size. Uh, I know it doesn't look very mini, does it? No, no. And, but, but they're light. It, but it's very confusing on to what the purpose is. And, and, and it turns out the purpose is you just pick the thing up and you throw it. And that's what she's telling me now. I thought there was some kind of, I don't know, point to it. Like you had to get it a certain way. But nope, you just take it and throw it and that's it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And now we're going to do some etchings. I think my etching was better, but you put yeah, yours in. So we should in. have used your etching. My etching was uh, It's not, okay. Uh, correctly done I don't but you think. get to choose one of the clans whether it's uh here it is dumbrock dumbrock that is the uh, merida clan and you're gonna just sketch over i did well, theme use it. A crayon. I took the green theme, themed it on green i had good intentions but it just didn't come out uh quite as good as i had hoped but it was still next fun time. yeah next time we'll go and do it again i know actually you did a few of them yourself i did it was, was fun pretty cool so here is sort of an overview. There is the uh, backside of the, the Brave Sandcastle Sand Castle, certified Angus horse up there. And uh, as you can see, those are the uh, four etching spots. That's the, why and each one that. is uh, for a different clan. And there is the front of the uh, Sand Castle. This is the Highland Games training ground. Plus you have this comfortable area here where you can sit in these leather-like chairs and go on the internet. Very comfortable. They have free Wi-Fi there and a uh, playground that was left over from the Epcot Flower and Garden Festival. And uh, we enjoyed it. It was a, a nice, comfortable spot in a very hot day. And free buttons are never bad. Free buttons. Four different free buttons. This last segment is Downtown Disney Car Masters Weekend. And we went on two days. Yeah, yeah, we liked it so much we went back. This was the most popular area, though, where you can meet the cars from cars. And it had like a 45-minute line every time we passed by. General Lee from the Dukes of Hazard. And this thing coming up is probably the coolest. That was my favorite. Yeah. I don't know who won, but that was my favorite. And there's the real, like the little wagon, an actual right, wagon. a little red wagon. Next to this big, and this is, can, a, this can drive. Like right. You can take this out on the street for a drive. I can't even imagine it. You've got that big, you know, <laughs> the the wagon thing in the way. And if you get a flat tire, you could probably just uh, hook that up to the tow truck and you'd be good to go. And it's Herbie. And Herbie sort of, see how the, the front goes? And there's this little kid that kept uh, looking at it. And every time he'd walk away the hood would just go up so it was very cute and these were the same singers that are now at test track so they uh, trucked them in to uh, 
entertain. Sing some songs. Yes. So that was uh, show number five. Thanks very much for your oh, that was a participation. Quick <laughs> and we'll have a good uh, week next week. Disney's Art of Animation. Bye for now. Bye.